Hello lovely, I'm Maria and in this video we're gonna give you 8 sentences to answer any IELTS speaking question. Well, kind of. So if you don't know what to say or you need some time to think, use some of these phrases and you'll be fine. Yes Rory? Oh, you put me on the spot with this one. Uh, it's hard to say with any certainty really. Uh, but you know, if I were to guess, yeah, that's something you could do. Okay, Rory, could you now read these nice phrases, sentences? Number one. Come on. Oh, you put me on the spot with this one. You put me on the spot. On the spot? A spotlight. Um, you, all of the focus is on you um, and you're, you're stuck because it's just it's a new situation and you have no idea what to do. So the strategy is you say this sentence and then you give the answer. It's not just like, oh, you put me on the spot with this one. That's all. Next. We're done. Next question. Yeah, you should give the answer, right? But this sentence helps you to buy some time to think. I'm gonna now ask some IELTS speaking questions and Rory is gonna use this phrase naturally. Okay, Rory? Naturally. Are historical films popular in your country? Oh, you put me on the spot with this one. Um, I would say... Well, again, they're more popular than they used to be because you have all these blockbuster films like Oppenheimer coming out now. People who produce Oppenheimer pay me money for advertising. So Rory here said you put me on the spot with that one or you said this one. It can be this one or that one because you're referring to something that has come previously. So it actually draws a nice connection between what you're saying now and what's been said previously. Okay, phrase number two. I'm not an expert, but if I were to guess... If you use this phrase, do not be like a robot, dear listener. I am hardly an expert, but if I were to guess, just to say the phrase. No, 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 no. You should mean it. Mean it. Okay? So no robotic usage. Okay? No monotonous usage. Like, feel it. For example, do you think climate change will affect water sports in the future? Well, I'm not an expert. Uh... But if I were to guess, then probably, I, I imagine if, I, if the sea levels are rising, then there will be more water for water sports to happen. So you see, this sentence is very good if you are asked a very specific question. This question, like climate change will affect water sports in the future. It's very specific. I'm not an expert, okay, on climate change. I'm not an expert on water sports. Really, I don't know. But if I were an expert, I'd say, I would say that, you see? So use this phrase for a very specific question, usually for a difficult question. Sentence number three. Rory, could you read it out? It's hard to say with any certainty. So it's hard to say with any certainty. I'm not sure. I, I, I kind of, I'm not sure, right? Maybe, maybe yes, maybe no, I don't know. If you don't know what to say, use this phrase. For example, do you think water sports are safe? Well, it's hard to say with any certainty uh, because I don't do water sports that often, but um, they're probably less safe than sports on land because there's greater instability in the water which you're engaging in the sport on. Phrase number four. I have absolutely no idea. Yeah, absolutely. It's stressed. So I have absolutely no idea. Enjoy saying this phrase. It's really nice. It's very liberating to admit that you have no idea. And this is a very good strategy. The question is difficult and you really don't know. You don't know the answer, right? Say it. Admit the truth, right? I have absolutely no idea. And then say something. For example, what invention do you think has had the greatest impact on people's lives in your country. I have absolutely no idea, and I mean that. Um, however, if we think about, well, if we think about just developments in general, then probably the internet, just because it's connected different parts of the country and different people in new and interesting ways. I don't think that's specific to Scotland, though. That would be in general. Phrase number five. Well, to be honest, I've never thought about that. To be honest, I'm honest, I am telling you the truth. I've never thought about that. Present perfect, a very nice tense. I've never thought. I have never thought 
about that. Rory, could you say it again? Well, to be honest, I've never thought about that. Well, to be honest, pause. I've never thought about that. The intonation goes up or down? Where? Uh, at the end. Oh, okay, then it will be going down, because, like, to be honest, I've never thought about that. What are the biggest challenges parents have to face when raising children? Well, to be honest, I've never thought about that, uh, mostly because I don't have children of my own. However, I imagine the, one of the... Oh, discipline. That must be the biggest challenge, surely. Like, keeping them in order and making sure they behave in an appropriate way. That's got to be a constant challenge. Phrase number six. Well, that's not a difficult question at all, is it? Now, this one is quite complicated because it has this question tag. Yes, the question tag. It's not a question, although it's called a tag question. But here, like, we're not asking a question for the examiner. Is it examiner? Is it? Come on, you tell me. No, no, no. It's kind of like a statement, right, Rory? Oh, what's the difference? A question tag is like a real question. This is just a confirmation tag. It's confirming. Yes, it's a difficult question. So these text questions are for higher scores because you give a range of grammar structures, okay? If you're not comfortable with this one, just forget about it. Use something else. There's, there's at least three other phrases that we haven't given you yet. Here I have some difficult questions. What can be done to reduce the noise pollution from the traffic? Well, that's not a difficult question at all, is it? Um, I think... Well, in some countries they put up uh, soundproofing barriers around roads to stop noise pollution um, from escaping that confined area. And that seems to be quite effective. Raise number seven. If I could see the statistics. Some IELTS questions are just like, oh, come on, like, how many people, is it popular, is it not? And then kind of like, how do you know? I haven't seen the numbers. So here you can say, if I could see the statistics, the statistics, okay, s, 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 s. statistics, like numbers, figures. And again, we're using the second conditional because okay, if I could see, but now I don't see the numbers. So I am imagining that if I could see, but I, I don't see, right? So that's so the second conditional passed. For example, why do many young adults keep changing jobs? Oh, if I could see the statistics, I could give you a more exact answer. However, um, I suppose it's because there's lots more instability in the job market compared to in the past. So that would explain it why young people in particular are doing this. Phrase number eight, the last phrase. I'm not sure what else I'm supposed to say, to be honest with you. Do we use this phrase to start the answer or at the end of the answer? If it's what else, then you've already said something. So, at the end or close to the end. So you see, just to signal that, okay, I'm done. I don't have anything else to say. That's it, okay? Stop, ask me another question. You can use this phrase. So I'm not sure what else I'm supposed to say. I'm supposed to say kind of like what I should say. I'm supposed to say is a nice one. Is rain good? Yes. I'm not sure what else I'm supposed to say, to be honest with you. I mean, it, it is good. It helps plants grow. It makes sure your skin does not get too dried out. But I can't think of anything else to say. In the comments, could you please let us know which is your favorite phrase or phrases, which like maybe like two phrases, sentences you'd like to use in your speaking exam? Write in the comments. And if you want to practice your pronunciation the way you say it, and we just have some practice with English to prepare yourself for IELTS, you can book your classes with Rory. Right, Rory? Yes, there's a link in the description. And I'm looking forward to seeing lots and lots of people there. Thank you very much for listening. Don't forget to check out our phrasal verb course. The link is in the description. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.